IP Showcase Theater. We've got a, uh, a full slate of uh, 11 presentations and a panel discussion for you today. So uh, feel free to uh, take in as much as you'd like. We have our um, schedules here on the seats. Um, please make sure um, if you want to get a uh, link to the copies of the presentations, the PDFs, to have your badge scanned at the uh, front desk. Uh, we're also going to be posting all of these um, uh, presentations as video recordings on the VSF uh, YouTube channel, and you can get access to that through vsf.tv. It's a very easy URL to remember, just vsf.tv, and those should be posted within uh, the next uh, week or so, possibly even sooner. So that being said, um, I'd like to welcome Jean-Baptiste uh, Laurent from uh, Intupix to talk about some of the really exciting new things that are happening with compressed video on ST2110. So take it away, Jean-Baptiste. Thank you. Good morning. So um, I work at Intupix. Uh, our, our company is a technology provider specialized in, uh, in uh, video processing and compression. Uh, so this morning, as I uh, introduced, uh, we will speak about uh, kind of a hot topic. It's the arrival of uh, JPEG XS. Um, so as you know, uh, 2110 is taking off or has taken off. Um, so it's designed to become the infrastructure of the future for all uh, uh, pr production facilities. Um, However, well, we know that it brings uh, many benefits, reducing complexity, less cables, bidirectional, increasing agility, rerouting, easier configuration for depending on an event, give uh, many new advantages uh, thanks to IP, and also supposed to be lowering cost, less cables, bidirectional, uh, sorry, should, we should expect uh, that uh, it would uh, bring also a, a lower cost. But is it really? We have more and more pixels to manage, more video channels to store, to transport. And we could, we could say that the roads are jammed already. So can we put more cars on the road without creating traffic jam and delaying arrival times of each passenger? It's a challenge. We know that uncompressed HD would require 10 gig infrastructure at least. You got a 2.4 2 gigabits for a 3G SDI uh, stream. Can we still speak about SDI? <laughs> uh, let's say HD 60 frames per second. Um, you already uh, uh, use some codec in uh, some replay and storage uh, um, uh, application in the, in the workflow. You have a, a new uh, monitoring system that need to go to higher resolution. And we could say that it's uh, already quite affordable to go to 10 gig. But when you consider uh, uh, 4K, you uh, have to consider 9.6 gigabits in uncompressed. So that won't fit in a 10 gig. So you will consider a higher bandwidth capability. You then have to, to move to switch that have a 25 gig capability, so 100 gig. Uh, and if you move to, so it's still a, uh, a bit more challenging moving to 8K. We still have some time for 8K, but 8K is already there in, uh, in Japan, for instance. There you will need 100 gig or 400 gig capability. Uh, it starts to be a, a bit of a challenge. So what if, if a technology could help there? Another challenge is how, how to manage more pixel while saving cost power, preserving quality with no latency, and simplifying the IP connectivity. So it started in 2016 with a call of proposal with a various liaison to uh, some standardization organization and uh, organization like AIMS, uh, CMT, VSF. Um, we had uh, six uh, proposals submitted to the group. Uh, TICO, for those who are familiar, uh, uh, that is a CMT RDD, was selected as baseline and from that the group did a collaborative work to make it better, to improve and arrive to the standard that is this year becoming a, a, a public, uh, published standard. Uh, and we had the first, I would say, technology demonstration at NAB 
And at this show, you can see first uh, products that are uh, starting to ship to uh, customer, to broadcaster. So where can JPEG XS be implemented? Everywhere uncompressed is currently used. That's the uh, focus of uh, this new technology. So in any application where latency is crucial, quality, and that look for low complexity and an efficient uh, bandwidth. So it's a, you, you know you have already a lot of codecs in, uh, in the broadcast industry and in, uh, in the media industry, I would say. We took a different approach with excess. The first focus was on preserving quality, complexity, and latency, and then we would have been looking at what kind of compression ratio we could reach in the, in the research and the development of that new standard. So int intra-frame codec were more balancing at that level, looking at compression efficiency as an important factor, but it was not the case in the research of uh, XS and distribution codec are focusing first on the bandwidth efficiency at a huge cost of complexity uh, um, and uh, latency, uh, uh, as you know. So, in a nutshell, we these are the main benefits of uh, XS. So, visually lossless quality, constant quality for production workflow, low complexity, being a multi-platform codec, low la no latency, scalability, and finally, which is very important for uh, our industry, open specifications for interoperability. So about the quality. So we use subjective and objective quality evaluation, and we didn't just focus on broadcast type of content. We used CGI, desktop content, so more complex content to look at the behavior to replace uncompressed, not just for broadcast, but also pro AV. Um, application where it's not just the, the live broadcast feed that you send, but sometimes it's just a remote desktop uh, uh, to which you need to, to access. We had a, a rigorous ISO uh, quality assessment, so we use a new methodology called the Flickr test. It's, uh, it's no uh, a standard that, uh, that has been published by ISO called a, a near lossless quality assessment for both natural and synthetic images. And for that test, we were um, ba basically uh, generating a sequence. In one side was uncompressed, and the other side was compressed after seven encode, decode loops. So we're testing the quality in a multi-generation context. As you know, in the production workflow, you, you go into several steps. So we want to make sure that the quality remains good after all these steps. And this, the side where we had the compressed content, we were interleaving with uncompressed. So it's also, you, you not only test compressed versus uncompressed, you interleave the compressed side with compre uh, uncompressed so that you can observe if visually you can distinguish um, any, uh, d any difference. And we had uh, about 360 uh, scores for that testing on various content. So people watching a professional screen at what we say 30 pixel per degree distance, which is like a two-thirds of the diagonal of the screen, and, and with a mouse clicking right or left, just to, to say this is where I think I, 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 uh, there, there is compression or not. And we were going down in bitrate till we were starting to distinguish the compression. What we can say about the technology itself is that we observe uh, from this testing a full transparency to uncompress down to three bit per pixel. So 4 to 2, 10 bit is 20 bit per pixel. So it's like, uh, in this context, 6.5 to 1. And then uh, visually losses down, down to 1.5 bit per pixel. Why do we do a difference between transparency and visually losses? Is that such kind of testing is much more demanding than any other testing that were made in the history of video codec development. So uh, regularly what people are doing is they just do side by side visually, but here we're doing that flicker test and then you start earlier to distinguish artifacts if they are. 
Um, so, and the codec has a smooth degradation characteristic, which means that if you compress a lot, if the, the distance to the screen is high, your eye won't distinguish the artifact also. It's not um, MPEG uh, DCT based uh, uh, scheme that is used in, uh, in Excess. We use wavelet. So the kind of artifact will be ringing artifact. So you lose uh, 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 hedge or details, but you, you still keep a good uh, vis visual um, impression of the, of the, of the content. So uh, these are some, I will uh, move a little bit faster. So we were comparing the codec. We had some anchors with other existing technologies, but we had no real anchor that with codecs that were uh, running at such level of low latency. So we obtained very good quality result. Here you have a PSNR. We compare to VC2, ProRes, or uh, JPEG 2000. And you can see that um, on this curve, uh, that is the, the, the green curve, that JPEG XS was high, uh, high, very performing very well on such kind of content. It's a line-based compression, processing multiple lines, um, and in the such kind of image, let's say the complexity is spread over lines. So you have a, it's, a, uh, it's, it's well distributed for such kind of a, of, of codex, so we were beating uh, 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 other, t uh, other codex at that level. Um, and if I uh, look, uh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, okay. So on other kind of uh, content, so here, much more complex, more demanding for, uh, for a video compression. We were uh, performing still at a very good level compared to like a JPEG 2000. Um, much more um, better than ProRes that use that process full frame, so introducing a lot of latency, and uh, and VC2 that is also a low latency uh, uh, codec. Um. So we perform PSN analysis in single generation and multiple generation, so up to ten generations. You encode, decode ten times you look at the PSNR result. So it's important to have a, well, you expect to have a, a, a very low degradation when you cascade multiple encoder. We benchmarked that uh, against other uh, video codec, and we saw that like as a JPEG 2000, for instance, that it, it behave in a, in a very good uh, way. Uh, for those who are familiar, uh, DSC and, uh, is uh, the, the codec that is used for the new HDMI, uh, um, uh, for 8K, uh, they, that one has some degradation. It's not that a problem for DSE if it's an endpoint, but if you would use that codec in a production workflow, you would get into uh, some issue. VC2 has also some, uh, some, uh, some more degradation, but uh, behave in maybe in a better way than, a, than a, a DSC, but not as good as JPEG 2000 or, or JPEG XS. So, we had the objective developing the new standard to achieve minimal complexity on all platforms. So we had some uh, a target of complexity when you implement the codec in an FPGA. So we wanted to target low cost or uh, high density of channel in a single chip. Uh, in software, we wanted to achieve real-time performance in a, a i7 uh, CPU for 4K uh, uh, resolution. I wanted to have a, a various degree of parallelism uh, for a GPU platform, so on a, in 2 pix boost, we show 8K 60 frame per second running on a GPU. Uh, we, we did in our lab up to 120 frame per second. It's, it, it's, it's running perfectly. Um, and to achieve also best trade-off in cost, poor consumption, and quality. So in many portable devices, if you have a camera, you want to embed such kind of compression, we need to control the heat and the power consumption of the camera. This is very important. And this, this was also a focus to be very low memory when you implement uh, such kind of technology in hardware. Minimal latency. So according to the MIT, the human will start to feel a latency above, uh, well, uh, thir 13 uh, milliseconds. So it means that you would cascade uh, multiple uh, devices 
we, we will always be at less than one millisecond because uh, we have like a 10 lines to encode and 10 lines to decode uh, in the in a hardware implementation in a FPGA or, or, or ASIC. So uh, um, this is very important, like uh, uh, f of course for uh, for uh, live production, but also like if you do interactive uh, uh, gaming or stuff like that, you you play with the mouse. You don't want to feel any uh, any lag, any delay. Uh, th this this was uh, an important focus for the technology. And. Finally, maximum flexibility. So we look at how the technology would scale for uh, all uh, current video formats. Uh, we, we can easily go up to 16K by 16K in resolution. We support 444, 422, 420, monochrome, RGB, YUV, and we can go from 8 up to 16 bit. Uh, um, and it's, of course, a support HDR. Maximum flexibility. We have also uh, a, um, a nice uh, uh, thing in, the, in that standard is that we have a, an embedded downscaling capability in the decoder, meaning that if I get a, an HD stream, well, let's say 2K resolution stream, I can decide if I want to just decode a 1K resolution or half a case of, uh, of resolution. If I get an 8K stream coming in, I can directly output an HD stream from it, a 4K stream from it, and the uh, 8K stream from it. No transcoding are needed. In software, on GPU, CPU, it means also I consume less uh, processing. In FPGA or uh, uh, ASIC, I don't need to use any scaler when I need to distribute on multiple resolution. If I need to do a, um, a video monitoring of my network, I can have a a lot of uh, HD stream or 4K stream, I can build a, a, um, 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 a simple monitoring system because I can just uh, a, a grab proxy. This, the proxy is part of the mainstream, let's say like that. You don't need to create a proxy channel, it's part of the stream. So what's um, a bit of a review on the, all the published documents? So you have uh, various parts in uh, JPEG XS. Um, I updated that uh, table from the presentation we did at NAB, of course. Uh, the part one is published. Part one defined all the coding guidelines of uh, JPEG XS. The part two defined the profiles. Uh, this, this, this is published. The part three defined the uh, transport and container format, meaning uh, additional uh, uh, boxes like uh, color boxes to uh, uh, put all the signaling of what type of uh, color HDR you, you are using, or the video box to characterize the video stream itself, and uh, also all the um, media type of format, like if you want to do a um, MOV encapsulation, uh, uh, and then uh, uh, we, we took care of all what is needed for uh, the RTP payload that, that is being defined at the IETF. So uh, this, this is the, the, the part that you can look at if you want to implement uh, the, the codec for a video system. And um, part uh, f four and part five are, will be soon uh, uh, published, uh, so the conformance testing in the reference software. And so we, the, the, let's say the, the project is not, it's just starting, let's say we, we are already discussing extended capabilities, so amendment, adding new features, new things, for other type of market, other type of uh, demands uh, for such kind of technology. Um, so we'll see, uh, well, we have two amendments ongoing at, uh, at, at, the, at the moment. One that is for to extend capability in JPEG XS and another one that is also for those who want to still use uh, over JPEG XS over MPEG2 transport stream like the VSFTR01. The similar approach can be done with uh, JPEG XS. And I, uh, I saw uh, uh, there on the screen that VSF is al already uh, uh, explaining that uh, uh, work will start with JPEG XS for wide area network at that level in the continuity of the VSF TR01. Um, so uh, the RTP payload of JPEG XS is about to be uh, in a final uh, state. Uh, all the comments have been uh, uh, received uh, from uh, early implementers and uh, so I would say that the document is, is now in a phase where it's not moving anymore, so it's just a matter of time to, to have the final stamp on it. Um, but it, it's available, or you, you, you can, uh, you can uh, get access to it on, uh, 
uh, on the web. Um, and uh, the, just heard that the 2110 22, which uh, specify how you can put a compressed stream in a 2110 uh, system, are just being uh, published as well uh, by SMP. So, how do I put my JPEG XS uh, stream in my 2110 system? It's pretty easy. It's the same approach as putting the uncompressed uh, stream in a 2110 system. You just change the RTP payload by the, uh, the compressed one. You add the compressed capability. The, the 2110 system is, a, a, is a already, uh, let's say, ready to, uh, to add compress, uh, compression uh, into it. Um, what does it bring as a benefit? Let's, let's look at the bitrate and efficiency. So you, you have some uh, on the show floor different place where you can look at uh, the quality of JPEG XS on Intopix booth, on the Fraunhofer booth. I know Navion is uh, also showing some, uh, some demo and, and they did a presentation yesterday. Um, we are showing in a range for like an HDSEI between 70 to 200 megabits typically, uh, 3G SDI from 150 up to 400, uh, 4K 500 up to 1.6 gigabit, 8K 2 gigabits uh, to 6.4. Um, what does it bring uh, in terms of capability? is you could fit every video format below a 10 gig network, which is a good thing, but also if you consider even a Cat5 e cable that has a 2.5 gig capability, you can even put your 8K stream over Cat5 cables. And in many buildings, in, in, a, in, in a laptop, you have a, you, you have a one gigabit connectivity. If you look at the list here, you can uh, put HD up to 4K over, over one gig. You would need 2.5 gig uh, Cat5e uh, capa uh, capability or Ethernet switch to go up to 8K. So even for those uh, who are also using uh, an SDI mapping approach like with uh, the SEMTRDD35 uh, Tico, it bring more capability. So potentially you can put a 8K stream over a single 3G SDI cable. Um, yeah. So, um, if you look at the at the workflow, for you could use JPEG XS all all along for the replay storage. We will initiate at the same uh, MXF uh, 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 mapping mapping uh, packaging for uh, XS as well. You can uh, record store in the XS format natively. You can, in the IP monitoring, get the benefits of the scalability. It's much simpler to develop monitoring system thanks to the proxy access. And you can go in a, in a simple uh, uh, infrastructure, much lower cost, uh, much lower bandwidth uh, also. And at the end, from the LAN to the one, you can also keep using the uh, one unified format also in, in uh, the, the complete workflow. In a nutshell, the SMT 2110 with JPEG XS is bringing a cost effectiveness, bandwidth, bandwidth efficiency, and, high, and still keeping, preserving high quality IP production uh, capability. So it meets all the requirements that we need for IP in terms of constant bitrate, uh, quality, complexity. We preserve all the IP uh, advantage and um, we can go uh, in a much lower bandwidth, uh, simplify um, uh, the network management, uh, smaller packets, uh, reduce the number of packets, reduce the storage, um, reduce the interface complexity. Um, we c it brings also a great capability. So you, mo you have today an, an HD infrastructure, uh, size for HD in bandwidth and everything, adding such kind of compression in a 2110 system uh, would bring you the 4K capability, um, and it, yeah, it is remote production and a cloud migration also, because when you need to enter in a public cloud facili uh, uh, facility, you have also some uh, a strong bandwidth uh, limitation. And finally, which is most important, it's, it's, a, st it's a standard ed with open specification. Yeah. Um. Okay, thank you, Jean-Baptiste.
Um, do we uh, have any questions uh, from the audience? Yeah, hold on just a sec. Hi, could you just outline maybe JPEG-XS's role in WAN distribution as well? Maybe it, it could be potentially used in 2110 WAN protocols that are being looked at? I'm so, sorry. So he's talking about wide area network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the, uh, there's a group in the VSF working on ST2110 over WAN. Could you mm -hmm. comment on that? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not f uh, part of the group, but they are studying what are the, 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 the challenges, what are the changes that need to be made to go over wide area network uh, um, to adapt the 2110 uh, protocol. But I'm not a network expert at that level, so I, w I cannot really comment. But uh, if someone in the room is part of the group. Oh, we, we have a presentation okay. coming up uh, from uh, Andy Rayner uh, later this week that will okay. be uh, addressing that. Any other questions? Yeah, hold on just a sec. Uh, do you know, are there any licensing fees for JPEG access? So, uh, or is it open standard? It's, uh, it's oh, what we say, it's open specification. When, when you are in a ISO-based standard, you have to follow uh, uh, some regulation, like it has to be uh, a f free or RAND-based condition to access. Uh, at the moment, the standard is, at the end, is just being published. Uh, we, we know that there are, there are some patents. Uh, Intopix, for instance, own some patents on the technology. Uh, but we are not in, a, in the JPEG committee. We are a small community. It's, we are not as a, like a big MPEG with a lot of lawyers. So we hope it will be a si simple path. So it's probably not going to be free. We'll see. Okay. Well, let's let's you know let's find out. Anything else? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Jean Baptiste. You're welcome. And um, our next speaker will be getting on in uh, another two minutes. So thank you very much. Thank you.